Yo, my name is Major Slack and this is my pro walkthrough of Borderlands 3. Before beginning the walkthrough, let's have a short 30 second Q&A. I will now take questions. You there in the front row. Hey Slack, who's Pee Wee? Pee Wee is my resident troll. If you're going to troll my videos, he's your competition. Next. Hey Slack, why are you doing a walkthrough for Borderlands 3? It's easy as fuck. Watch your language there, buddy. And if you think this game is so easy, why are you watching a walkthrough video? Next. Slack, your aim is terrible. You can't shoot for beans. That's not a question. Okay, Slack, your aim is terrible. Why is it that you can't shoot for beans? I beg to differ. But never mind that. You don't need to be a crack shot with lightning reflexes to be good at video games. With my walkthroughs, you learn to play smart, not hard. Next. Eh, eh, eh. Warning, your intro is now too long. Quickly proceed with the walkthrough or risk losing subscribers. Oops, our time's up. Okay, let's get busy. But Slack, I didn't get a chance to whine about your character choice. Uh, Pee-wee, I didn't even choose a character yet. Okay, go ahead, choose a character. Okay, I think I'm gonna go with Zane. Zane? Why are you gonna go with Zane? He's the worst one. Why don't you play as Moe's? Okay, let's play as Moe's. Moe's? Why are you playing as Moe's? Why don't you play as Flack? So, basically, no matter who I choose, you're gonna complain. Yep, that's about the long and short of it. Okay, we're going with Moe's. Moe's? Why are you Shut going- Shut up, Pee-wee. Major Slack Video. All right, this is Borderlands 3. We're playing as Moe's. Pro walkthrough starts now. Hunter, huh? Name's Marcus. You picked a hell of a time to join the Crimson Raiders. <laughs> Good to see someone survive the attack. I'm Lilith, commander of the Crimson Raiders. Those bandits you fought are part of a cult hunting for the vault map. But you and I are going to find it first. For now, my scout is waiting for you up ahead. Good luck voice in my head. Weird. This is your stop, Vault Hunter. Good. I'm locked, loaded, and ready to loot. Try to stay alive. I'd hate to lose a new customer. <laughs> recruit. I am a CL4PTP steward bot, but you can just call me General Claptrap of the Crimson Raiders! What's your name? Mose, Gunner First Class, ex Vladoff Mechanized Infantry. Thanks! I'll pre-order your tombstone just in case. Now, those jerks who tried to murder you are the children of the vault, a bandit cult who follow their creepy leaders with blind devotion. Which reminds me, if you're going to obey my every second call, You'll need an Echo device! The Echo 3. Slightly more powerful than the Echo 2, and twice as expensive. Besides, the Echo 2 had a tiny issue with spontaneous combustion, so they rebranded those as grenades! Now listen up, recruit. Lilith ordered us to take over a Children of the Vault propaganda center. Time to show those culty weirdos that no one messes with the Crimson Raiders. Follow me, recruit, to glory! All right, to infinity and beyond. Before we wreak our righteous vengeance, you'll need to register your Echo at this quick change. Once we defeat the cult, I'll be famous. And when I'm signing autographs, I need you looking sharp while defending me from my legions of fans slash stalkers. Okay, all you have to do is access the quick change machine and um, that's it. You don't have to do anything. I'm going to rename my girl Gunner Girl.
Okay, all you have to do is go over here, pull the lever. Best recruit ever! But don't get cocky. The propaganda center is up ahead. Those cultists have been killing crips and raiders left and right. They totally suck skag balls! But I've got a foolproof plan to kick their culty asses. Okay, what's that? I hit a weapons cache nearby. Stay quiet and follow my every move. Can't do it. It's stealth time. Stealth time, all right. Stealth time. Ooh, he over here. Ooh. Whoa, okay, what? Spin around, okay. What? Fall on her face, okay. Hey. Hey, slide over here. Whee! <laughs> Perfect. Once we complete our mission, Lilith has to promote me to Super General. Stand back! You did say stealth, right? Relax. On Pandora, it's actually super weird if something's not exploding. Now take your gun, recruit. You're gonna need it. Okay, here's our first weapon. It sucks. Just suck it up. Like myself, <laughs> aren't beholden to their primary function. I can dance and sing. And some guns now include an alternate shooting mode. Try it out. Okay. Follow me, recruit. There we go. By the way, I will do a complete overview of game mechanics and alternate weapon modes and all kinds of other stuff at the end of the video okay and for, for now I'm just gonna let the uh, the um, opening dialogue play out because there's a lot of dialogue and I won't be able to dance around it with my commentary all right complete overview of game mechanics and whatnot coming later on wait here I'll talk my way in, become their king, and then you'll surprise slaughter them in cold blood! Watch and learn, recruit! Hello? Anyone there? This is Shen! Only influencer of the children of the vault! What do you want, Crabot? Hello, bloodthirsty maniac! It is I, Claptrap, Slayer of the Destroyer, and Super General of the Crimson Raiders! We have you completely surrounded! Open the gates now, and perhaps I will be merciful. Uh, yeah. Let me think about that! They might call themselves Children of the Vault, but they're still bandits, and bandits are incredibly stupid. Okay! We're going to surrender! Please don't kill us, Crapi! That's what I thought! Open the doors immediately for your new king! Easy! Easy! I'm, uh, I'm coming out! Just wait right there! We did it! We? I did it! Another victory for the Crimson Raiders! Hey, I feel funny. What's happening to me? Okay, here we go. First firefight. We have to kill seven bandits. We have no shield and we got a crappy pistol. Uh, you could take cover and then try to pick them off one by one, or you could do what I'm about to do, just rush right into the center um, and um, sucker punch them all from the center, and you'll be able to pick them off right from the center as they spawn. Okay, it's, I find it's a lot easier to do it like that. Okay, let's do this. Ow! My exhaust port! Scrub. Into the holy fray. To the arms of Tyree. This could save your life. Then you will be alive yet. You're gonna get through. Here it is. Find Lieberman.
I know Claptrap can be a little... Claptrap, but he's still one of us. We're gonna have to save him. I'll be there soon. Damn it. Okay, he's one of us. Let's make the tour. Looking for ammo and money. And possibly health. Bingo. Most importantly, open up this chest here, which always has the same thing. It has two Jacob's pistols, one with a scope, which is really important. That's going to be your first boss buster. There's our Jacob's pistol with a scope. Make that your weapon number one. Let's give it a favorite star. And the Vladoff pistol is weapon number two. Favorite that. And junk this, and we're ready to go. In the next area, we're just going to ignore all the bandits. Go off to the left, and I'll show you what to do from there. Ignore the bandits, go off to the left, go behind here, go straight for this red trailer here. Climb up, jump over this, do a slide here, just for effect. <laughs> Grab some ammo, climb up in here, and there's a hidden chest up here. Right there, we'll open that up in a minute. Get some ammo here. This hidden chest always contains either four pistols or two SMGs. Let's see what we got this time. This time we got four pistols. Grab them all. And from this position, you can pick off all the guys down below using this as cover and using your Jacob's uh, pistol as a kind of like sniper rifle. It's real easy. Got lots of cover here and pick them all off real easy. Sit there all day. There's no way your supple and delicate body can survive a showdown with Shiv unprotected. Look around for a shield. Okay, and the shield is over to the left here on top of this trailer in that chest right there. Let's go get it. There's always four shields in this chest. One of them, at least one of them, maybe more, will have at least 105 capacity. If you're lucky, you might get one even more. Let's see what we got this time. 77. All the others are usually 77. There's our 105. 77. And we got two 105s this time. So let's take one of the 105s, take that, and it will automatically equip it, and grab all the others. Let's favor that for now and junk the rest. Junk that, junk that, junk that. Um, let's look at these pistols later. All your dumb friends are dead. I challenge you to a trial by combat. But because I'm stuck to this magnet, my loyal champion shall vanquish you in my stead. Come on in, heretic! I haven't met my sacrifice quota for the day! Okay, here's our first boss fight already. Shiv. Best weapon to use, I figure, is your Vladoff, or rather your Jacob's pistol with the scope, and go for headshots. And what we can do is try to hit this barrel here. You can melee barrels now and they go flying. So we could try to hit this barrel and hit him with it, and that'll take off a lot of damage if we land it. There's another barrel there that we can use. Okay, let's give it a shot. Other than that, just back away and do headshots. You should be able to take him down, no problem. Here we go. I'm gonna sharpen my blade on your spine! Okay, immediately turn around. 
over this barrel. Got him. Oh, you're gonna die. There we go, that's all it takes. It's a KIA on the knife wielding maniac. Super dead. And you always get a Jacob's shotgun. Hang on to it. Because you want to get, even if it's a crappy shotgun, um, you want to have as many weapon types as possible in the beginning because you're going to run out of ammo a lot. All right, and we'll get into those other weapons later. Score one for the Crimson Raiders. You and Claptrap secure the area. I'm on my way. All right, let's look around for loot and, and ammo and cash. Recruit? Are you dead? If not, get me down! The controls are on the second floor! Okay, I'm good with that. Borderlands 3 now has this new thing with objective markers. They kind of leave this breadcrumb trail. So that's where the objective marker is now. But it's going to change as soon as you get there. Some people find that annoying. I do a little bit. It, it doesn't really bother me that much. But uh, yeah, that's the way it works now. So watch, as soon as you get to the corner, the, the objective marker is going to change. See, now we got a new objective marker. And they kind of leave this breadcrumb trail to lead you to where it is. Honestly, I think that game developers think that gamers are getting stupider and stupider as the years go on. I don't know. <laughs> So the hand-holding gets uh, more and more intense. Okay, here we go. The magnet that frees Claptrap. He jumps down, jump over, and revive him. By holding down your interact button, whatever that is. And we leveled up so we can get our action skill. Let's take a look at that right now. Moses' action skill is Iron Bear. And this is the very definition of Rampage. I just love Iron Bear. You can choose one of three weapons to begin in. We begin with like basic weapons, uh, minigun, B-35 grenade launcher, and the railgun. I'll explain all about that at the end of the video. For now, we're just going to choose the railgun. That is not to indicate that that's what I'm going to go with for the rest of the game. We're going to be swapping it out like crazy throughout the game to accommodate certain situations. For now, go with the railgun. I single-handedly took on the COV and sent them packing. Now all that's left is to signal Lilith that the mission is complete. Cults destroyed every other Crimson Raider stronghold, so this will have to do for now. So what's your name, killer? Mose. And you're the voice in my head, right? Yeah, about that. Not the weirdest thing you're gonna see on Pandora. But seriously, thanks for answering my call. We might not have the numbers, but with a badass like you, we've got a fighting chance. Welcome to the Crimson Raiders. Pandora's a dangerous place. That grenade mod will come in handy. You should equip it before we get started. Let me know when you're ready. Okay, so you get rewarded for this mission with a grenade mod, 268 bucks and 89 XP. Something I'm a little disappointed with is they don't tell you on the mission cards what your rewards are anymore. So yeah, it's like... You know, in Borderlands 2 and Borderlands 1, yeah, they would always list on the mission card, you get this much XP and, you know, you get a certain weapon, etc., etc. But now, nothing. So I'm going to try to document, um, I tried to document as much as I could my first time through the game, exactly what all the main missions reward you with. And I'll try to tell you that um, as we go through the game. Because sometimes it, it flashes on the screen so quickly how much XP you get and whatever. 
that uh, you don't even see it. You know, I had to record a lot of this just to see how much um, you get rewarded. Anyways, onward, we get a <laughs> getting carried away. Um, this is what we get. You always get the same thing, a contact grenade. Equip that right away. Give it a star, but it probably won't last long. And talk to Lilith. Ready to chuck some boom and frag some maniacs. Claptrap gives you three grenades. Right. In case hey, you don't have any. Do you hear bloodthirsty screaming? More CLV. Let's see what you got, recruit. Okay, here's a good time to use your action skill. Up goes Iron Bear. Blast them all to oblivion. We got a foothold. Maybe things are turning our way. Come on, killer, you're with me. Let me catch I you up. I love the way she calls you killer. A while back, we found a map. Led to vaults all over the borderlands. Dream come true, right? I didn't realize how big of a target it would make us. We got attacked and the map was lost. I've been looking for it ever since. This way. I was so focused on finding the map, I didn't notice that Pandora was changing. The bandit clans used to just murder each other for fun. Now, they're all under one banner. A cult. The Children of the Vault. Right. Come on, let's take a look around. Their leaders are the Calypso Twins, and their followers worship them like gods. They're convinced the map will lead them to something called the Great Vault, and they've been slaughtering anyone who gets in their way. We heard a rumor that a bandit clan found an alien artifact in the desert. Could be the map. That's what we're here to find out. Way to take down ship, recruit! I knew you had Isle stand guard! <laughs> Perfect. What do we have here? Kill! The Sun Smasher Clan has recovered the sacred vault map! Send our followers to invite the Sun Smashers into our holy family! And hurry! The Twin Gods grow hungry! The map. I knew it. We have to beat them to the Sun Smashers. I'll open the gate. Come on, this way. I'm gonna set up camp and gather some intel on the Calypsos. Find the Sun Smasher Warchief and do whatever it takes to get that map. Seems like you guys got this. Good luck. I'm gonna go hang out in some trash. So what are we working with here? Well, this place kind of sucks, but it's all we got at the moment. Not the first time the Raiders have had to start from scratch. It's no sanctuary. Hope Ellie gets that ship working soon. And I believe that's the end of the dialogue in the beginning, so now I can start the walker. <laughs> Alright, first things first. Um, controls. Actually, first things first. In case you've never played a Borderlands game before, Borderlands is a looter shooter. It's basically a first person shooter with a heavy emphasis on loot, that is weapons and items that you collect throughout the game. Random weapons and items that you collect through the, throughout the game that get better and better as you go along. And it's all about getting the best weapons and items. And it does have some RPG elements. Um, let me just switch over to my th level 34 character to demonstrate that. Actually, now's a better time to talk about movement.
controls go to your menu screen options accessibility here's the most important controls you probably want to learn about one is when you aim aim down sight you can either set it to hold or toggle i like it at hold so basically if i want to aim down the sight i hold the right mouse button i'm on the pc version by the way and i'll put my specs up on the screen if i want to aim down sight i hold the right mouse button when i release the right right mouse button um, i stop aiming like that but you can set it to toggle so that when you simply tap the button it'll you'll stay aimed so now i'm i just tap the right mouse button and i stay aimed no i'm no matter what you may prefer that i do not Same thing with sprint and crouch. You can either, either have it hold or toggle. I prefer sprint and crouch on toggle, right? Next, um, movement. There are some things different from pre previous Borderlands. You can now slide, okay? So if you sprint and press the crouch button, you slide, which is pretty cool. And there's two tactical things that you can do, do with this. I've discovered so far. Other than that, um, it's mostly just for show. I saw a load screen once that said you actually go a little bit faster when you slide. I, I have not been able to perceive that much difference. Apparently you go a little faster. But one thing you could do is you can actually knock some enemies over. Some, not all of them. You can actually knock them over. For example, skags. If you slide into a skag, you'll knock them over, which is really handy. So for example, if you got a shotgun, a really neat move is um I just love doing this. Slide, knock them over, boom, blow them away. It's, it's really cool. It's a really cool strategy. Another thing you could do tactically speaking with slide is you'll notice that when you slide, you finish up in crouched mode. So now I'm in crouched mode. So actually you could use this to slide behind low cover. So if there is no cover, but there is some low cover, you could run up slide into the cover and you're already you're already in cover position you see so that's another tactical thing you could do with slide other than that like i said it's it's pretty much just to look cool next mantle no more grenade jumping this is great you can now climb so let's go up to a ledge for example see here's a ledge before in borderlands 2 you'd never be able to jump that high but now you can simply hold down the jump button and your character will climb up try it again this is really cool. So look out for stuff, any kind of ledge that's within reach that you can climb up on. Next, just like Borderlands the pre-sequel, you can do ground slams. Anytime you're in the air and you're following, and you're falling rather, hold down the crouch button and you'll do a ground slam. So let's just demonstrate that. Jump, hold down the crouch button, whammo. All right, let's try this again. Jump, falling, hold down the crouch button, slam. And there's a mission later on that's going to force you to do, to do that as one of the objectives. All right, actually a few missions um, that require you to do that. Okay, so you better learn that. Next, um, firing modes. Where's that Vlad off we picked up? Ooh, this is a good one. But it's not sure that everyone will have gotten that one. Where's that one with the... Uh, under barrel, yeah, or rather the zip rockets. This one here, everyone's gonna get this one. Okay, by way of demonstration, the Vladov pistol that everyone gets in the beginning. Um, <clears throat> pardon me, it has two firing modes. If you look at the bottom right corner of the screen below the ammo counter, you see it says pistol. Press whatever key that is for you, which is beside that for me, it's A, and you switch firing modes. Now it's zip rockets. Some firing modes have a kind of a timeout. So once you use it up, for example, zip rockets or rockets or anything like that, usually has a timeout once you use up all the ammo in the alternate firing mode. But you can stay perpetually in the zip rocket mode as long as you don't empty out the clip. So we have five in the clip and all you have to do is wait for it to automatically recharge. Recharges and so you could perpetually, you could stay perpetually in zip rocket mode as long as you don't empty out the clip. So fire, two, three, we got one left. You can just wait here like that and take cover. And it'll eventually refill. 
However, if you empty out the clip, now it's timed out. You see there's a little can't do it beside the pistol. See? And now we have A again, so I can press A to switch to zip rocket, so there's a timeout. And that's especially with like weapons that have like a rocket, you know, they could fire a you know a rocket with like a thousand damage that but it will have a timeout, so you can't fire rockets all the time. Alright, so that's the way that works. Other weapons like Malawans, which have um, alternate firing modes um, and like different elemental effects. For example, you get a Malawan pistol with both corrosive and shock on it. So one firing mode is corrosive, the other firing mode is shock. Those kind of weapons, there is no timeout. You can just switch back and forth between the two firing modes at will. I think I got another one here with a taser. Yeah, let's try that one. These are pretty cool too. This one, underbarrel taser. That this one will probably have a timeout. But th these are really cool though. So they switch the the taser and then and then they just totally electrifies the enemy. It's really cool. Yeah. So that's that. And um, there's a lot more to alternate firing modes uh, than that. But I'll have to demonstrate with other weapons as the walkthrough progresses. There are now. Speaking of elemental weapons, there are now two two new elements in borderlands 3 cryogenic which is you know it's the freezy the freezy element and radiation which totally kicks but find a radi radiation weapon hang on to it and weapon test it because it will probably be the best weapon in your inventory radiation totally rocks um that's that um iron bear iron bear is moses action skill all right and uh, like I said, you could choose any one of these three basic weapons at any time. Okay, so at any time you can equip the V-35 rocket launcher. At any time you can equip the railgun. At any time you can equip the minigun. As long as you're not in Iron Bear. Once you're in Iron Bear, you can't swap weapons. Now, as the game progresses and you get more and more skill points and you advance through the skill tree, you'll unlock these so-called augmentations. For example, once you get to the second tier skills here in the Demolition Woman skill tree, you'll unlock this augmentation here, Vanquisher Rocket Pod. Now the augmentations themselves don't cost any skill points. You just have to get to that level. So for example, you have to get the, to the third tier or the fourth tier to unlock these two weapons here, okay? Um, and you can hover over each augmentation to see how many skill points you have to spend in that skill tree in order to unlock that augmentation and you can swap out the augmentations at will once again though only while you're out of iron bear iron bear is basically a mech warrior um let's just activate it right now this is the minigun no matter what you use up fuel you see the fuel counter at the bottom in the center that's your fuel counter so even if you're just standing there doing nothing, you're constantly using up fuel. If you fire your weapons, you use up more fuel. As you can see. Alright. And in the bottom left corner of the screen, that's Iron Bear's health. There are two ways your Iron Bear session ends. One, your fuel runs out. Or two, your health bottoms out to zero. You, like, you, get, you take so much damage that your health... Um, just goes to zero and then your iron bear session ends but other than that you're free to, to just go crazy it's all about fuel consumption though okay we bottomed out or rather we used up all our fuel now iron bear times out how long is the time out for by default two minutes two minutes yeah two minutes but um there's skills you, you can get that can um, decrease the cooldown time and give you more fuel. The skills that decrease the fuel down or the cooldown time are this one here, Grizzled. Okay, as you're killing enemies um, while you're in Mo's mode, you can decrease the cooldown time. And another one here is Explosive Punctuation. So as you're doing splash damage, you're decreasing the cooldown time. Other than that, the only other way to decrease the cooldown time is to simply exit Iron Bear early. And it's all about how much fuel you have left. The more fuel you have left, the less cooldown time 
there is for the next iron barrier session to recharge and um, I'll explain more about that when Iron Bear recharges. I'll just wait. I'll just skip ahead. Okay, we're getting close to Iron Bear recharging. Look in the bottom right corner of the screen. You see a little Iron Bear icon. It's kind of like a light blue. And you see that the fill line is almost to the top. When it gets near the top, it starts a little five-second countdown. Something you probably want to get used to because it really helps when you're in the middle of battle. See, there we go. Three, two, one. It turns yellow and Iron Bear is now recharged. Okay, let's fire it up again. While you're in Iron Bear, hold down the crouch button to exit Iron Bear immediately. See, so now we've exited Iron Bear with almost all our fuel. And as you can see, the fill line for Iron Bear recharging is like already halfway full. It's approximately half of what your fuel is, approximately. So if you exit Iron Bear with almost all your fuel, you'll cut your cooldown time by half. All right. And if you like, you know, exit Iron Bear with half your fuel left, you'll have like one quarter of your fuel cooldown time will be cut. So like it's like that. And that's something you should get used to all the time. If you don't need Iron Bear, exit out of them right away so that your next cooldown time will be shorter. All right. And um, as far as skills and augmentations and everything, that's better explained as we go through the walkthrough. But my first time through the game, I focused mostly on Demolition Woman because I thought these were the coolest skills, even though I experimented with them all. And what's the best augmentation? I, In my opinion, okay, there's, opinions differ on this, but I think the best weapon which carried me throughout the game, I thought it was a total riot and was really versatile. No enemy could stand before it was Vanquisher Rocket Pod in the Demolition Woman um, skill tree. So first you get V35 and then you have to sp spend five skill points in um, this skill tree in order to unlock Vanquisher Rocket Pod. Um, this one here, Hammer Down Protocol, which we launched in Nuclear Warhead, wasn't as devastating as I thought it would be, but this is kind of useful as well. Um, over to the Shield of Retribution skill tree. This is probably the most, probably the most versatile of Iron Bear's weapons. You have, basically you have the Railgun, which is a shock weapon. Then you can turn it into an incendiary weapon by getting this um, augmentation, or you can turn it into, into a corrosive weapon by turn it, getting this augmentation, or you can turn it into a melee weapon by getting this augmentation, and then you can get, you know, various, um, you know, augmentations on top of the melee weapon. So this is probably the most versatile. If you wanted to have like a fully loaded Iron Bear, what I would do is put five skill points into Demolition Woman to unlock Vanquisher Rocket Pod and then start putting skill points into the Shield of Retribution tree to unlock all these. That's, that's one way to go. I think that would probably provide you with the absolute most weapons as soon as possible with Iron Bear, which would be a lot of fun. Over to the minigun um, skill tree. This is probably the one you want to go for first, the one that reduces the amount of heat because the minigun will overheat. You can't fire it forever. It will eventually overheat, which I really don't like. Um, but all of these weapons are useful in some way or another throughout the game because certain bosses that can be handled a lot better with certain iron bear weapons, right? And I'll get more into that as the walkthrough progresses. Let me switch over to my level 34 character and give you a quick rundown of how leveling up works in case you've never played a Borderlands game before. Okay, here's my level 34 Mose. Let's just respec. And yes, you can respec. It costs you one tenth of your cash on hand. Get all our skill points back. Okay, now as you progress through the game, you earn skill points. When you kill enemies, you earn XP. When you complete missions, you earn XP. When you complete challenges, you earn XP. Once you get a certain amount of XP, you get a skill point. You get to spend these skill points in the skill tree. Let me just um, unequip my class mods to make this easier to understand. Okay, no class mods. Um, let's say after your first, uh, see right, right now we're at level two with my other character, okay? Once we get to level three, we'll get a skill point. You get to spend it here 
and as you see this like this fill line starts going down the more skill points you, you get so then you get to level four you get another skill point spend it there get another skill point spend it there and once you spend enough skill points the second tier of skills become available so let's spend a couple more one two boom now the second tier of skills is available and now this augmentation is available once again it doesn't cost a skill point it's just you just have to get down to that line and that's just the way it works as you progress through the game you kill more enemies get more xp um level up each level you get a skill point you get to spend it anywhere you like you don't have to spend it in one skill tree in fact i don't recommend that swap around and get the skills that um, you think are best suited to your playstyle until you get to level 27 at which point all your capstone skills the ones at the very bottom will become available because you have enough skill points that you have unlocked all these skill tiers at that point you may want to pile all your skills skill points into one skill tree in order to get the capstone skill like for example this one which really kicks ass all right so that's basically a, a quick 101 on how the RPG system in um, Borderlands works and I'll get more into that as the game goes along I think that about covers all the basics um, oh Interface, yeah, of course. Let's start with the backpack. You start with two weapon slots where you can equip weapons. Two of them are locked, they'll get unlocked as you go through the game. Here's your shield slot, here's your grenade mod slot. This is your class mod slot, and this is your artifact slot. They're now called artifacts for those of you who are familiar with um, Borderlands. It used to be called relics, now they're called artifacts. And beside each weapon slot, you also have these trinket slots. This is strictly cosmetic. You collect trinkets as you go along through the game. So let's just like equip, say this one, and then you have a little trinket hanging off your um, your Jacob pistol. There you go, see the little green alien guy. Yeah, strictly cosmetic as far as I've, I've seen. All right. Um, to compare weapons, I'm on the PC version, just click on one weapon, you get this, these two little green arrows, and then just hover over any other weapon or item to compare them. Really handy. Junk and favorites. Like Borderlands 2, you can now specify weapons as junk or favorites. You do that by hovering over any weapon and pressing the melee button. Okay, for me, my melee button is R, and you can just keep pressing that to cycle through um, various tags that you can set on your weapon. So, this is junk, the little red trash can. This is favorite, and that's nothing. Um, so, this allows you a way to rapidly sell all the stuff that you don't want by simply setting them all as junk. So, for example, I set all these as junk. This, uh, the, the, the COV weapon, I probably want that. So just by way of demonstration, these four are set as junk. Go to any vending machine. Doesn't matter. Doesn't have to be a weapon machine. Access it. You don't even have to go to the cell screen. Just simply access the weapon, the vending machine, and press your reload button, and that automatically sells all your junk very quickly like that. So you'll probably, as you play, want to, on the fly, set weapons and items as either junk or favorite so that when you finally hit a vending machine, you can essentially sell it all. Another new feature, which I love, if you come in front of any ammo dump machine, just stand in front of it. You don't even have to access it. You see that there's a button you can press to automatically refill all your ammo. So for me, it's E, so just press E and that's it. I love that, I love that feature. Um, next, missions. Like I said, missions are, they're now missing really important information, how much they reward you with. I don't know why they did this, but uh, yeah, I don't like that. Yeah, <laughs> they should have put that in. Anyways, main missions, you could sort them by mission type or region, and the main missions are listed at the top. The side missions will be listed below. You only have to do the main missions. You can almost, I say almost, upward word almost, 
only do main missions to get through the game. Almost. There's a certain point where you have to level up. A couple of three points where you have to level up. <clears throat> but it's a lot different from Borderlands 2 or Borderlands 1. The main missions reward you with a lot of XP. I found for, I'd say, three quarters of the game. Every time I completed a main mission, I, I leveled up. And I was able to keep pace with the main mission leveling. Um, like how what the main mission was... Uh, leveled at so for example the next main mission main mission is at level two so like if your current level is below the level of the main mission that you currently have to do you're gonna have a hard time with it but for the most part you can keep up with it just by doing main missions mostly sometimes you have to level up um, doing side missions next map once again, on the PC version, I'm using the left mouse button to scroll around the map like this. I'm using the mouse wheel to zoom in and zoom out the map. And you can now use the right mouse button to move the map around on the Z axis, which is great. Because throughout the game, there's like multiple levels to the map. And in order to find your objective marker, it's often on a different level. And you have to kind of go in 3D mode to see clearly where your objective marker is. You know, might be on, this, on another level up, for example. So yeah, get used to that. Looking around the map in 3D mode. Another new thing is you can now go to any fast travel station you've found from the map. Just like that. Just click and hold on it, you automatically fast travel to it. From anywhere. As long as you have a fast travel station... Um, showing on the map and there's usually several different fast travel stages for each map you can just click and hold on it you could also fast travel to your vehicle i can't demonstrate that now because we don't have vehicles yet that is two or three main missions down the line we'll get vehicles but it's so cool you can now use any vehicle and simply open up your map click and hold down on that vehicle that you left wherever on the map and fast travel to that vehicle. It's, it's wild. So no longer do you need to spawn two vehicles like you used to do in Borderlands 2 where you could actually spawn a second vehicle and then use a catch a ride station to kind of like fast travel back to your other vehicle. I don't, I don't know if you, I know a lot of you Borderlands veterans know that trick, but you don't have to do that anymore. So no longer are you required to spawn a second vehicle. Um, what else can you do? Um, while you're in map mode, press the melee button to toggle your zone progress. And you can see exactly what's going on with this particular map. So as you can see, we have eight missions to do, 13 locations to discover, another fast travel location to discover, how many red chests are available, how many crew challenges you have to do, etc., etc. All right. And these so-called Iridian writings, I'll show you about that later, but you can't, don't bother trying to discover what that's all about because you don't have the right tool. You only get this tool way at the end of the game. I don't know why they did it like that. So essentially you can't 100% any zone until you get near the end of the game and get that special tool, which will allow you to read Iridian writing. Anyways, I'll talk more about that later. Um, challenges are here. These are all the different challenges. I'll talk more about that later. Backpack we covered. This is your skill tree. We covered that. And finally, guardian rank, which is only relevant once you've run through the game at least once. So I'm just going to completely ignore this. But in case you're wondering, you see, I don't know if you can see it in this video. On top of my XP bar, let's just go to a dark area here. There we go. Nice dark area. On top of my yellow XP bar, you see a second bar which has a little bit of pink in it, which is starting to fill up. That's your Guardian rank bar. And that only fills up, or starts filling up, once you've completed the game at least once. So that is completely irrelevant to this walkthrough, so I'm not even going to talk about that. But you will eventually see um, a little notification there saying, I had Guardian tokens to spend. Just ignore that, because if you're on your first playthrough through the game, you're not going to see that. All right, and I think that's about it. That's a quick overview of all the menus and the game mechanics. 
Alrighty then, that's it for this video. I want to thank you all very much for watching. Coming up next part two, we'll get back to the combat, back to blowing everything up and shooting things down, and all the mayhem and rampaging involved in Borderlands 2 gameplay. Um, if you thought this video was remotely entertaining and or informative, please give the old slacks through a big old thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to make sure that you get more real walkthrough videos like this coming at you. All right, thanks for watching. See you next video. Hey guys, real walkthroughs like these are an endangered species here on YouTube. For a complete lowdown on the YouTube video game walkthrough scene, check out my Patreon page and please consider making a donation to yours truly, Major Slack, to help keep real walkthroughs alive on YouTube. You can donate as little as $1. That's $1. That's all. That's all it takes. Alright? Thanks a lot. Really appreciate it.